Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us back to Yellowstone National Park near a trail system called the Beaver Ponds Loop Trail. It meanders for five and a half miles along sagebrush meadows and through stands of trees. Halfway along the trail is where the namesake beaver ponds are located, before the trail turns back toward its origin. The trees here are mostly evergreens, with lodgepole pine, Engelmann spruce, and subalpine fir trees casting the majority of tree stands. Beneath this pine canopy are a broad array of berry bushes, yielding their fruit in offset seasons, starting with strawberries in the spring and raspberries in the summer, and the fall offering elderberries. These berries provide important sugar and nutrients to bears, and many more animals, as they prepare for the winter. These wild berry yields are also highly influenced by drought. In the park, moose, elk, bison, deer, and antelope are very common to see and frequently viewable up close or from a vehicle. The common predators in this area include gray wolves, coyotes, cougars, bobcats, black bears, and grizzly bears. The geography here is high altitude and rolling hills with an elevation gain of 350 feet through the route. Signs along the trail introduce animals like beavers, muskrats, and various water birds, but seem to neglect the ever-present and growing population of grizzly bears. On the morning of Friday, May 28th, a 39-year-old hiker whom we'll call John was enjoying his time in the wild environs of the Beaver Ponds Loop Trail near Mammoth Hot Springs. He was hiking by himself, and I could find no source indicating he had bear bells, bear spray, nor a firearm, so it is assumed he had none of the protective equipment. Near Old Gardner Road, the Beaver Ponds Loop Trail's trailhead has a parking lot, and John parked his rig there. He was planning on hiking the 5.5-mile Beaver Trail Loop system and viewing whatever wildlife he happened upon. The only problem would be that he would happen upon two grizzly bears, each of whom demonstrated a very different reaction to his sudden presence. Statistically speaking, bear attack victims have some commonalities they share. The average age of a human who is attacked by a bear is 37.5 years of age, but victims range from 93 years old, being the oldest, to only 5 months, being the youngest bear attack victim. The vast majority of bear attack victims are outside of their homes or vehicles when they have a run-in with a bear. John followed the winding and slowly climbing trail for several hundred yards through sagebrush and evergreen stands, enjoying the fresh air and freedom every hiker feels when they venture into the forest. About one and a half miles into the hike, John came upon an open meadow. In the meadow were two grizzly bears. We don't know exactly what the bears were doing in the meadow. Perhaps they were digging into anthills, searching for the protein and vitamins found in the insects. Or they may have been a courting pair, seeking to continue their reproduction as a species. One thing is for sure, one of these bears took extreme exception to John's presence and let him know in a painful and violent way. As soon as the bear's heads raised and their vision fixed on John, he knew this might get ugly. One of the bears immediately began charging toward John's location. Undoubtedly, adrenaline shot through his veins as his mind hoped desperately that this charge was a bluff charge. As the bear neared him, he could see that there was no slowing down this bear as its intentions were clear. It was coming to eliminate a perceived threat to itself. Now I want to take a minute to point out a difference in the responses the bears had to John's presence. One bear identified him as a threat to either its territory, safety, or resources, and charged him. The other simply disappeared into the forest without any confrontation. We know that statistically male bears are more territorial than female bears, and that younger males are more apt to attack humans out of hunger or curiosity. There was no indication of the presence of a food cache, nor cubs, so those two causes are off the list of contributing factors. The grizzly knocked John to the ground in a blur of claws and teeth. As John yelled and kicked at the bear, it clamped its jaws onto his lower legs and quickly punched its canines through his flesh several times in rapid succession. The entire time it was attacking John with its jaws, it also clawed at his legs with its three-inch-long curved razor-sharp claws. In a typical defensive attack, the grizzly rapidly bit onto his flesh and pulled, then immediately bit onto another part of his leg and did the same there. In a frenzied and furious attack that only lasted a few seconds, the grizzly tore holes in John's lower legs before leaving him injured, bloodied, and terrified. 
It disappeared into the forest as rapidly as it had come. John quickly assessed his injuries and could see his blood trickling from the gashes and punctures in his lower legs. He wondered if any bones were broken and tested his legs to see if he could walk. He regained his feet and determined that both of his legs seemed to work, though the injuries to them were horrific and painful. Fortunately for John, the attack happened just a little over a mile into the hike. It could have been worse and have occurred nearer to the midway point of the hike. John knew his hike was over, and he would need medical help immediately. There was no source that indicated that he had a beacon of any kind, nor a cell phone, which is probably what led him to try to hike back out the way he came, as opposed to waiting for help to find him. John may not have known this, but the year 2020 was a drought year over the entire western United States, and Yellowstone was no exception to this weather pattern. Reservoirs and rivers were at very low levels, and normal food sources for grizzly bears were struggling under the burden droughts inflict on their survival. When it's too hot or too dry, wild berry bushes yield a much lower volume of berries than in years with normal or higher precipitation. This may have been a contributing factor to the grizzly bear attacking John. John limped and staggered his way the short distance back to his vehicle parked at the Beaver Ponds Loop trailhead. An ambulance arrived soon thereafter to transport him to Livingston Hospital in Livingston, Montana. Medical professionals stitched up several wounds on his lower legs and treated him for bacterial infection after washing his wounds and bandaging them. Linda Veras, a Yellowstone National Park spokesperson, described the attack as a mauling, but made no mention of what the causes behind the attack may have been. Yellowstone National Park officials quickly responded to news of the attack by closing the Beaver Ponds Loop trail system and clearing out all hikers and backcountry visitors. Giving an aggressive or irritated grizzly space and time to calm down is pivotal in preventing further altercations with hikers and backcountry visitors, and in this case, it was successful. There were no further incidents reported with grizzlies in that area that year. John's attack was the first mauling by a grizzly bear in the Yellowstone National Park in 2021, although it was not the only one near its boundaries. Just a few months prior, in April, local backcountry guide Charles Mock was fatally mauled by a grizzly. We did cover this episode, so if you want to check it out, I've linked to it in the video article below under the Related Videos section. The factors contributing to Mock's fatal attack were completely different, and valuable lessons can be gleaned from that episode. Park authorities have issued statements indicating that all of Yellowstone National Park is bear habitat, from the deepest backcountry trails to the boardwalks along the geysers and mud pots. In this area, grizzlies can be anywhere and may present a danger to people who do not allow them proper room and respect. They recommend that hikers and all park visitors remain vigilant for bear presence and activity. Telltale evidence of bear activity in an area may include piles of scat, fresh tracks, torn up logs, Ant hills that have evidence of digging, and even rolled over rocks. Being bear aware can prevent grizzly attacks, and the trend is that the larger the group you are with, the lower your odds of being attacked. There has never been a case of a bear attacking a group of seven or more people, so group size is important. Additional recommendations include staying at least 100 yards away from any bear you are aware of, carry bear spray, and be familiar with how to use it. Make noise to avoid surprising feeding bears. Avoid traveling at dawn, nighttime, or dusk and never, under any circumstances, run from a bear. Prior to John's grizzly attack, the latest incident occurred in 2020 and involved a grizzly knocking a woman down and scratching her thigh. The woman was treated for her injuries, and they were not life-threatening. She was also hiking alone, but near Fairy Falls, just north of Old Faithful. The incident centered around the woman coming into close proximity of a sow and her cub and was viewed as a defensive attack, so no actions were taken against the sow and her cub. After reviewing the facts surrounding this episode, I have a few questions for you. Do you think the bears that John ran into were mating or courting, and his attack was one of defense of the boar's territory? Why do you think that one of the bears attacked while the other fled into the forest? Given this was a drought year, was this attack a territorial or resource defense attack? Would bear spray have prevented John's attack? What would you do if you hiked upon a meadow with two large grizzly bears? I will be glad to read and respond to your thoughts, so please post them in the comment section below, and let's talk about it. As a quick reminder, I wanted to make sure that I let you know that Scary Bear Attack's merch store, linked to below, is offering a great deal on coffee mugs, which have a QR code embedded in the graphic. This will enable you to pull up our playlist to watch our episodes whenever you want. You can even download our playlist to bring along with you as you travel. It's an easy way to learn about being safe in bear country. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. 
If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.